Hey, how's it going? 15th of May. I'm putting in my sweet corn. F1 variety. I don't know what breed it is because it was a... Uh, this was a backup packet that I got from Wilco last year. Now my sweet corn I had originally planned to sow was called Swift, which is an F1. And I put it in the pots and um, yeah, it just didn't grow. I think I got three plants out of 40 seeds. So I put the Wilco in, the backup Wilco seed in, but instead I chitted this, so I put it into tissues, chitted it uh, out of 40 seeds. There was one that didn't sprout, so I was really pleased. I have since chitted some more sweet corn. So this bed here with the rye still standing, that rye is coming out and, and the sweet corn will go in this bed as well. I do net it just for a, probably about three weeks. I'll keep the net on. It just saves all the usual suspects kind of destroying it. So I'll put these last six in. They're just a little bit smaller, the plants. So I'll give them another few days and as they sort of reach the size of these I'll put these in. And that's our first bed of corn. I do love corn. These, these frames were very simple to make. Sort of a thicker roof pattern there, about an inch by inch and a half. And a thinner roof pattern there which is about three quarters of an inch by inch and a half. Just put a screw in the top and a bit of plywood on the corner. Just as a bit of a brace. But what I did, I drilled a half inch hole in the bottom about two inches and I knock these pieces of rebar in and put a point on the ends and they're just really handy you know for for this job because you can sort of put them in as high or as low as you want like so in this case they're going down because the sweet corn by the time they get up to the top of this net I, I will have taken this net off but I like these square frames because with, with the hooped ones, there's not much height on the sides and the things tend to start growing against that side and, and sort of pushing in. So yeah, these, I, I like these, I really do. Let's put them in and get this net on. Actually, just before I net up, I'm gonna put this uh, courgette in. Because really they want potting on. So I, I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna put them in the ground now. I'm putting a courgette at the other end as well. Uh, not that you need two courgettes, one courgette feed, feeds an entire street. But uh, I'm putting, putting a courgette at the other end and a gherkin. And then the net can go over then. 17th of May, and I did a video, I think on the 10th, six, six or some days ago, where I said that the rye had finally topped out growing. I was wrong, but it's up there now. It's about seven, maybe seven and a half foot, something like that high. I am putting a frame in for my Greek Gigantis runner beans, which are absolutely amazingly delicious beans. I love them. The last year I grew them on the ends of these paths here. I think I had four stands on the paths. I had a couple over there and I had one there and one just in front of you where the camera is because the wind is always kind of coming this way off the sea which it is today when the wind gets up because they are they get to a horrendous height these beans they'll actually grow 17 foot high so yeah because the wind's always this way it was just slamming the frames they were on and a few times the frames actually ended up going down so i'm putting the frame along this way with more uprights in this year uh, with the hope that the wind will be kind of heading this way and glancing off the frame. I've just put these inch to inch and a half bamboos in. Um, just be careful if you're using these because, and, and especially if you're pushing them in the ground, these bigger ones, because sometimes they have little shards coming off the insides of these, which, which sort of stand up like a little shard. And last year when I was pushing one in, I slid my hand down the cane and one of the shards went straight through my finger. So it was out of this side and out of there. Tried to pull it out and it just kept breaking off. Four days later, ended up in hospital, having to have my finger cut open, tourniquet, and anaesthetic to get it out. They eventually got it out. Um, it was just such, such a faff it was. I was an entire day in the hospital to get the splinter out. 
um, and about three days later it was still swollen and sore and it turns out there was another splinter in it still so one rather than sitting in for a day in A&E again I just squeezed it for all my might and another slither shot out so there was actually two slithers in my finger uh, not another experience I want to uh, go through again so yeah just be careful if you're sliding your hands down this stuff now to get these in a much easier way than I used to so what I do is just take a metal bar like this put it in the ground where I want the cane to go in and start spinning it around get it as deep as I want to go probably about a foot something like that so that's what I do so I've just pushed it into there widen the hole and then these canes they just go in beautifully also what I do now is I hold the canes between them wet my hands so my hands don't split and just push them in and the bottoming out they're going well into the clay here our first support I will put in about here somewhere there I'll just put a zip tie on it just to hold it and then I'll go along with my string with my hessian string and I'll just tie all these up I don't like using too many cable ties yeah last one here if the tie is long enough right I'll just tie them up now with some twine and when I come to plant my beans I'll just put another smaller cane in behind every bean plant uh, and they'll just spiral themselves up when they get to the top I'll let them come back over so yeah when they get to the top I'll just bend them over and then I'll just train them to come back down again but I found last year that generally once they top out about six foot they don't really produce any more beans after that because we haven't got a long enough summer they do like the heat butter beans so these are my Greek gigantis beans they are huge beans now the reason I have planted them in such a small ridiculous module is because these are very very finicky when it comes to moisture so if you plant them if I was to plant them in a bigger pot which is actually what they need there's so much moisture surrounding that bean that the bean will rot they rot for fun these things once you get them going they are fantastic but in that initial stage of germination they are really so finicky um, you don't want a lot of moisture around them so that's why I plant them in these small mod smaller modules like this because there's only so much moisture can surround them I planted them I gave them one water and three days ago and I haven't touched them since I haven't given them any water whatsoever so that water that's in that little cell there is enough to allow the bean to swell and I shouldn't do this but I am going to lift one of the beans out and just show you the size of these things wow if you look there he's actually just starting to grow look at that there's his shoot coming out now fantastic absolutely fantastic so as that root becomes visible here in the bottom i will then either transfer these into a bigger pot something like that that three inch pot or if the weather's suitable and it's nice and warm then i will put them straight outside they're not finicky but they are heat loving and they are cold intolerant when they are young plants so that is my greek gigantis 20 beans will give me more than enough to last me a year i've still got maybe two liters of beans in a mason jar at home and as i say they just double in size when you put them into the compost they're huge things and they are delicious and this is two days since I last showed the, the Greek Gigantis butter beans which are already out of the pots and making some really nice root so rather than pot these on I'm just going to try them in the ground and hope that the mice don't come after them or the rats which you'll see planting one in front of each upright and these will twist themselves around so I'm just really planting the ones that have, that have just poked the heads up and just see some lovely root in there let's just get them buried so they can't smell that seed too much we 
One more. Which one? Let's go with that one there. No, let's go with that one. It's a bigger. It's a bigger bean that one. I'm just rooting around amongst the onion root here. <laughs> These onions have bomb roots everywhere. Right, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight. Eight of them in. So we're not quite halfway. I have sold some more Greek giants. I've sold another ten. So if all these get eaten, I've got enough to replace them. But I'll let these grow on. There's, there's one of these here, which just is not going to grow because there's something. There's just something gone badly wrong with that bean. I'm afraid. With the top of it, it's just not formed its own its leaf. But anyway, we'll put it back in, just see what happens, but it's not gonna grow. So I am one short already. I'm hoping the sound is good today because my girlfriend just bought me a DJI mic, wireless mic, and I'm hoping it's the answer to my prayers. My previous radio mic was just so bad that there was so much interference, disturbance, wind noise, just, I just have horrendous connection problems and everything with it. I, I've actually thrown so much footage away, you won't believe it. But um, yeah, so I'm hoping the DJI is doing the job. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Catch you later.